stories that are untold, underreported, and all out inspirational. Carrie Pena reports. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Carrie Pena Reports on iTunes and Stitcher. And for watching our live feed, you can always subscribe to our shows on inspiredmedia360.com. Our guest today, Melissa Delaney, was a fast rising star in the political world, working for Governor Doug Ducey before branching off to become a partner in her own powerful firm. And uh, then her world was rocked by two life-changing discoveries. Melissa, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for having me. So before we get into what has happened to you over the last year, because your story is really stunning. I've watched it unfold, and I've had the good fortune to know you um, for many years. But let's talk a little bit about your career. Sure. And uh, you were uh, Governor Ducey's spokesperson, and now you are a partner into in Axiom Public Affairs. Mm-hmm. What drew you into the world of politics? Gosh, that's a great question. Um, when I was in college, I was a journalism major, and I studied at Georgetown for a summer before my uh, before I graduated. I did a program called the Institute for Political Journalism, and I went out there for the summer and just fell in love with Washington and decided this is where I need to be when I graduate. Was it the action? Was it? Yeah, it was the action. It was the center of it all. The yeah. city is just a great city to be in. Uh, so I spent my spring break that year Um, pounding on doors and trying to find a job on Capitol Hill. And I ultimately wound up um, at the National Republican Congressional Committee. uh, It was the 2002 cycle was that year, um, which is ground zero for all um, House campaigns across the country. Um, And it was just it was just it's a great place to get started. I worked on Capitol Hill for several years after that. Um, And um, let's see, from there I went to working in the Bush administration, the George W. Bush administration for Mary Peters, who was a former um, ADOT director here, but she was the U.S. Transportation Secretary and worked on some crazy issues for her that was uh, really dynamic and really fun uh, before ultimately coming back to Arizona. So knocking on those doors uh, served you well. Yes. I always say tenacity is half of it, right? And everything was moving along really well. Uh, You ended up joining uh, Jim Norton and Sean Noble. Mm -hmm. Sean Noble, a good friend of ours here on the show uh, at Axiom Public Affairs which is a lobbying and communication firm Mm -hmm. here in Phoenix. And then all of a sudden, your world was rocked. Mm -hmm. You were diagnosed with thyroid cancer. I was. um, It'll be exactly a year ago tomorrow. Tell me about that day when you found out. Um, I will never forget that day. Uh, My husband and I were taking my parents out to dinner to celebrate the holidays. And um, we went out to dinner at Durant's, you know, just had a great time. My parents had never been there before. And then we went to see Andrea Bocelli um, at U.S. Airways Center right afterward. And it was just uh, and it's like that night has two different, uh, you know, parts to it for me because I can remember the dinner and we were just laughing, you know, and having some drinks and eating great food, you know, I mean, Durant's at Christmas time is, is so great. Yeah. And then Bocelli. <laughs> yeah. And then Bocelli. And, um, my doctor started calling me, um, like as we were walking into U.S. Airways Center and I kind of missed her call and I was like, you know, we kind of knew that, you know, that we were waiting for this to come, you know, and what, you know, what it, what it could be when we kind of got the ultimate results. Um, and uh, and I remember just sitting outside of our suite where we were watching um, the concert and just being out there with my husband. Just and she was kind of telling us the news and kind of what to expect and what to do next. So and that just feels like in my mind it feels like a completely different night, you know, from the dinner we'd had just you know an hour earlier. What, what kind of emotions were you going through when you heard those words? You yeah. have cancer. Yeah, um, it is. It doesn't feel real. Um, I mean, certainly we all know somebody whose life has been affected by cancer, but for me, it just kind of felt like it was a dream uh, right until I went into surgery uh, for that. Um, But it's um, since that diagnosis, I I know it is one of the fastest growing um, cancers among women of childbearing age. Mm -hmm. Um, So since I've had my diagnosis, I I probably know four or five people, whether they're direct friends or friends of friends who, you know, in the course of kind of telling people what's happened, that they know somebody who's been through this also who had the surgery. Yeah. Um, so I had a full um, full thyroidectomy. It was an um, eight and a half hour surgery. They took out 24 lymph nodes. 19 wow. of them had the cancer on them also. Wow. So, um, But little did you know that yeah. that was going to be nothing compared to... That was not to be our healthcare crisis of, of the year. 
So then uh, around that same time, your daughter, Anna, mm-hmm. um, was experiencing some fevers, right? Mm-hmm. And, and tell me about that. You know, she'd had some fevers, um, you know, probably starting in the fall. You know, she'd missed some school. Um, and ultimately, she got diagnosed with mono, um, which is unusual. Um, she's, she was six at the time. Um, it's unusual when you're under the age of 10. But, you know, we've all heard of mono. We've all had mono. You know, it was, um, it, you know, to be quite honest, it, it felt somewhat minor given what we were, you know, at the time we were trying to schedule my surgery and figure out when we were going to do it. Um, so it did seem kind of like a, a blip for us at the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the fevers persisted. And mm-hmm. after your cancer was somewhat wrapped up, if mm-hmm. you will, mm-hmm. um, you realized that the mono was something altogether more serious. Altogether, certainly. Um, after visits to, um, you know, half a dozen specialists, um, lots of tests, lots of biopsies of her liver, biopsies of her bone marrow, um, she was diagnosed with something called chronic active Epstein-Barr virus. And this is a very rare um, disease. It's a complication of mono that for her stems from a um, primary immunodeficiency that we still don't know what, what that actually is yet. We've done some testing, but those test results have not come back yet. But what, it, what we expect that to show is that she is missing something um, that helps her fight mono and fight. It's the Epstein-Barr virus that causes mono. Um, that anybody else who's had mono, like me, I had mono in college. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you get sick, you have some fevers, you get real tired, maybe your throat hurts. You know, a few weeks go by, you kind of start getting back to normal. Well, Anna just wasn't getting back to normal. Mm-hmm. Um, this is life threatening. It is life threatening. Um, she was pre lymphomic. Um, she would have, if we had not treated this, she would have ended up with lymphoma um, and uh, lots of other different complications. So she ended up having to be admitted to Phoenix Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. Amazing facility, by the way. Incredible. Um, And she had a bone marrow transplant. She did, in August. So let's talk about um, sort of what you guys have been going through and this Mm -hmm. movement that has spread nationwide and gotten the attention of a lot of celebrities all in for Anna. So you were, were with her in the hospital for... 40, 45, 45 days? days, six weeks. Yeah. What's that like? I mean, you're. I mean, your whole life is turned upside down. You're in this hotshot career. You're a partner at this firm. You're mm-hmm. a young woman. You've got a great husband. The next thing you know, you wake up and you're basically living in Phoenix Children's Hospital. We did, um, and you're absolutely right. You know, it's um, it's an election year. Uh, usually, uh, you know, primaries in August, and then the the race from August to November is is, is a very fast sprint. Yeah. Um, and that was right at the time that you know I had to check out. Um, and I'm very grateful to my partners at Axiom. Yeah, I was very I was very fortunate to to be able to do that, um, even in an election year. Um, but yeah, I mean, time stood still, you know. And I, you know, when I when I talk to people and, um, you know, when people say something like "You're so strong," I don't know how you could do it. Um, I couldn't do it if I were you. Um, and th- my answer to that is always, yes, you could. You know, uh, you're a mom, especially if they are a mom. If you're a mom, you know, you, you it just is something I, that, that kicks in and you do it. And, and it was really just a day-to-day sort of way of living for those six weeks. Okay. You know, I really am a firm believer at um, in, in how important it is to have friends, strangers, community mm-hmm. um, praying for you mm-hmm. and uh, wishing you well. And in your case, that went viral. Yeah. Talk to me about the All In For Anna campaign. Sure, we you know, we kind of went back and forth before deciding how public to make this, to be honest. Um, but we had so many people that knew she'd been sick. Um, it really kind of started out as an, as, a, as an easier way for us to keep people informed on what was happening with her. You started a blog. And, we started a blog, yeah. yes, um, and uh, you know, started a Facebook page for her to make it, to make it easier to, to check in. Um, and it really just has grown in such an amazing, um, amazing support group for us. Um, like I said, for people we know, people we don't know, friends of friends, um, you know, even, um, you know, we have letters and I, um, from um, Senator Al Franken yeah. sent her a handwritten letter wow. uh, saying that, you know, he'd heard about her story. Bipartisan uh, support. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Senator Mike Enzi sent her a letter. 
Um, you have a picture with the hosts of um, America's Got Talent. America's, America's Got Talent. Simon Cowell and yes. Heidi Klum. Yes. And then you had a special visit to the hospital. Tell me about that. I will. So uh, Kristen Chenoweth was in town to sing the national anthem at the season opener for the Cardinals. And um, she was doing a visit at the hospital. And she made a special visit up to our room to see Anna um, because Anna loves Wicked. Um, and she loves this show from the Disney, or it's a movie from the Disney Channel called The Descendants, if anybody's seen that. But yeah. Kristen, <laughs> Kristen is in that also. And um, so she came in and walked in singing popular from Wicked. Oh, wow. And, yeah, that was, must have been so cool. It was so cool. And she was just so lovely and, and so kind. You know, it strikes me, Melissa, that you've worked um, for many years in this rough and tumble wor- world of politics mm-hmm. that is can be so, so ugly and so hateful. Absolutely. Um, but now you've experienced really the best of human nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't even have words to talk about. You know how it feels to feel that the, the, the Cardinals have been incredibly supportive. The cheerleaders have come to visit her. Um, you know, and it just it it really puts into perspective some of the things you do every day. And going from um, being extraordinarily career driven and ambitious. Um, which I wouldn't say I'm not those things today, but I just have a new perspective on them, on some things that really matter. And, uh, you know, for someone who probably would have eschewed staying at home for any other reason, um, as much as I love my kids, but I've just I've always been a working mom, and that yeah. has always been the best fit for me um, to be a better mom, um, to really take these last few months and, and, and really value them yeah, as hard as they've been. Um, to, to, to value that time. And it really has changed the dynamic of our family. And don't you think that a lot more people are kind people than we are often led to believe? I do think so. I um, Certainly this last year, just even politically, people have been so divided and so angry um, about their beliefs. They're angry at you if you don't agree with them on any issues. Um, it's something that um, I, I don't like to see personally, but it, it really has been... Um, wonderful to see the support um, from so many people across the spectrum, across the globe. Um, one of those people, I, you know, I, I would be remiss without acknowledging our donor um, that gave my daughter, you know, the marrow. I, I hope we get the chance to meet him someday, but all I know about him is that he is a 32-year-old man who lives in Europe somewhere, you know, and uh, that's one thing that we have really tried to speak out about because um, the bone marrow transplant process is so I mean, the science is amazing and, and, you know, incredible and beautiful, um, but it's such an easy thing to do to get on that registry and yeah. do that for somebody. Um, you don't have to give up a, a kidney, you don't have to give up an organ, um, you know, not to be dark. It, you know, it, organ transplant is great too, but usually it, it's uh, as a result of some, you know, tragedy that you're giving up something like that. Yeah. Um, this is something that regenerates in your body. It doesn't take that much um, to give it. Um, I've been tested, and I, I hope that I got have the swabbed. honor. Yeah, I got swabbed. So for those yeah. who don't know, it's just a quick uh, swab, cotton swab mm-hmm. in, in your mouth. And in this case, this gentleman who did that, whoever he is, saved your daughter's life. He absolutely did. And I hope I get to tell him that in person someday. What will you tell him if you see him? That's a great question. Um, I, I just really want to give him a big hug is what I want to do. I always send out some pre-interview questions and I asked you how this has all changed your life and you wrote me something um, that I thought was really um, impactful. You wrote, my previous life seems small by comparison. We took so much for granted before. Facing the prospect of potentially losing a child makes you realize the things that are truly important. I was very much focused on my career, always pushing to be the best. I loved my family, of course, but I always had a fire lit under my tail. I feel more content with where I am now, and finally, at almost 38, have the confidence and peace of mind to really put family first. Mm -hmm. What does that feel like? It it feels like the right place to be, and um, maybe a you know a lesson learned with a a huge expense and. you know, and I think all of us, you know, my family, if, if we could not have gone through this, you know, last year, of course, we would, that would have been better. Um, but I think that the, the lessons and the blessings that come out of situations like this um, are, are exactly that. And being able to have that perspective maybe was missing before and um, just being able to be more at peace with those decisions and, 
you know, it really, whatever hands are dealt, you know, my way in the future, it, it, it seems like you'll be able to handle them or I will be able to handle them yeah. a lot, just with a lot more grace um, and just a lot more understanding. And um, It changes your entire perspective. Uh, yeah. It just changes how how you is Anna everything. doing today? She is doing great today. Um, clinically, she's doing very well. Uh, she's a teacher who comes to see her for four hours a week, who is wonderful. Um, she's on she's on par to go on to the third grade next year. Um, reading a lot. She likes to play Wii. She likes to play Just Dance on the Wii. And she has to still be at home, right? She can't she, she can't be exposed to any germs or anything yep, like that. Yeah, we have very you know new strict new protocols in, in play. If anybody wants to come to the house, we have to screen them. Uh, but she's made some very special friends along the way too, um, and really the the team at PCH, um, especially the bone marrow transplant, they team, are incredible. Is, they are. I mean that I, that there's not a word that could that that feels like an understatement to yeah. call them incredible. It just it really is a dynamic team. I've heard them called. Uh, people I've interviewed previously have referred to them as angels on earth. Yes, the the whole team from from the nurses to the child life specialists. Um, you know, everyone there is just, and of course the doctors and, and the admin staff. So the all in for Anna is going to the Today Show. It's going to the Today Show. <laughs> Tell me about yes. the segment that's coming up. Yeah, they're doing a week, um, uh, they're doing a theme called Sharing Kindness is what it is. And uh, through just word of mouth and, and some mutual friends that are that are in New York, uh, they heard about Anna's story and they're doing a focus on Be The Match and kind of they're trying to raise awareness about donating bone marrow or at least getting on the registry to do that um, so they came out uh, I think it was last week and spent some time with Anna and talked to her and followed her around and watched her dancing and the she's like a big star now <laughs> <laughs> she wore a pink wig for it it was it was it was pretty awesome you know what it is what strikes me as super cool about your story Melissa is that um, you know you've been through something it's incredible you're a strong person but it's incredibly painful and scary and I'm I would imagine as a mom myself to little babies that there were some dark days sure um but you've managed to turn your story into a very inspirational story and that's helpful for so many people oh, thank you and um you know I, I would just close with this um story two years ago uh, my youngest daughter had a surgery at pch and it was um at the time it seemed very scary anytime your child has surgery but it really was a very straightforward surgery that she had on um on her bladder and, and kidneys to, uh, to correct a problem um, and I remember with my, my we, we tell this story. I remember being in the elevator uh, by myself one day, and you know, and I was stopped at a floor, and a dad got on with his daughter, and um, you know, and I don't know her story, but she was probably about seven years old, and she was bald, all of her hair was gone, and she was wearing a mask. Um, and I remember seeing her and almost kind of coming to tears in that elevator, thinking to myself, "Man, I am so lucky, you know, that there are people in this hospital that are going through things that are." so much more terrible than what I'm going through. I'm so grateful for what I have. I remember having that very distinct thought. And then two years later, you know, we are that family. And I've, I've, I've been on the elevator with Anna um, and I have gotten those same looks from people. Um, so you just never know, you know, when something like this will strike you. When you will be so thankful to have a facility like PCH here, you know, that you have to travel to go to. Um, but just, you know, in the blink of an eye, your life can change, can change. That's very true. And, um, yeah. So I, I think, um, yeah, everything can change, but you can try to make good from the change too. And to know that so many people are out there fighting for you yes. and alongside you is everything. Yeah, absolutely. We are just so grateful and thankful to everybody who's been helpful to us well you know that i'm sending little anna so much love <laughs> thank you and i can't wait um until she can come and visit and she's ready to get here. back she out in the world would and just love this <laughs> she can co-host with me now she's ready she's got the television experience she is she, maybe she's got a future there <laughs> we are wishing you guys all the best and uh, where can people find out more about your story you can learn more about anna at coda for anna d.com at facebook.com slash all in for anna um, her Twitter handle is at all in for Anna. Melissa, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you. So really much. great to have you here. And thanks to all of you for being here, uh, for listening and watching Carrie Pena reports. You can find me on Facebook at Carrie Pena on Twitter at Carrie Pena TV. And of course you can always subscribe to our shows at inspired media, 360.com today's show produced and engineered by Shannon Hernandez brought to you by inspired media, 360 until next time.
Stay inspired.